About two weeks ago, I covered the most generous reward Survivor gave to its contestants, but this one is a little more different. Survivor is one of the most hardcore shows in reality TV, and often prides itself on that. With that being said, however, we'll be covering five seasonal twists that turn the difficulty down to easy compared to our last video, where at least the rewards were won through individual or tribe challenges. Exemplifying this, at number 5 are favourites in fan versus favourite seasons. In the history of Survivor, we've seen this twist on season 16 Micronesia and season 26 Karamoan, where you pit a tribe of 10 former contestants against 10 apparent fans of the show to see who will come out on top. And to that I say, the favourites. Obviously. These seasons are equivalent to having a deck stacked against you. The returnees have time to reflect on their original seasons, pinpointing their flaws, and have a better familiarity with the challenges due to them actually competing in a variety of them previously. In the words of the great Jonathan Penner, You could be a fan of the Boston Red Sox, man, but you don't want to play against the Boston Red Sox, you're going to get your ass handed. Overall, the favourites have won 5 immunity challenges to the fans 3, and every vote out post swap, except 1, was a fan. Out of the 22 people to make the merge in both fans versus favourites seasons, only an insane 8 out of them were fans compared to the 14 favourites, with only one fan ever making it to the final 3. And well, we all know how well Sherry did. In full all-star seasons, everyone is even in having played the game before, and in captain seasons, while the returnees have the experience, the newcomers have the numbers, evening the dynamics. Not to mention the captains per tribe are even, meaning the challenge as well as the game knowledge is also even. Ultimately putting a full cast of seasoned vets against complete new starts makes it unfair. Historically seasons with 2-4 to four returnees almost always have at least one at the final tribal, showing how valuable their experience is, and this has even happened internationally in the likes of Australian Survivor Blood vs Water. And on the topic of International Survivor, at number 4 we have the VIP lifestyle from SA Maldives. Much like the prior seasons, this had a clear divide, with one tribe being the quote unquote plebs and the others being the celebs. The normal people were subjected to being banished to the island by the military, had to carry their supplies to shore, and the beach was littered with coral that stung their feet if they accidentally stepped on it. Contrast this with the celebrities, greeted with a champagne reception, were driven in by cruise boat, had seemingly a flotation device to help them swim in, and, in my opinion, had the nicer beach. Now this season was rather bizarre, in the fact there were only 19 people on this cast, with there being 10 plebs and 9 celebs. My personal theory is that they weren't able to cast enough people considered as celebrities, which is fair enough. It's not like the pleb tribe had anyone that could feasibly have celebrity status. You know, like a prior ex-rugby player or something. If only. Nonetheless, because of this imbalance in the numbers, the plebs were divided into two sub-tribes and forced to compete in a tribe immunity challenge. Contrastingly, the celebs played for reward in fishing gear and flint, but the challenge was individual matchups, which didn't bond the tribe as much as the plebs' whole team challenge for a more important factor in immunity. Despite one group winning, all the celebs when returning to the camp still could use the reward. Even Vanessa, one of the celebs, ultimately calls this reward redundant as the losing four could still use it. Nonetheless, this twist makes the plebs more fractured as a result, and due to only five going to tribal, they're more likely to feel forced to vote out a more integral member of their group. Compare this to the celebs, who didn't even have to vote anyone out, spending those days simply bonding. Now to be fair, this structure was to keep the celebs versus plebs theme a secret for longer, and beginning episode 2, they swapped into two tribes of 9, making the twist marooning exclusive, which is more than can be said for number 3. 
The haves versus have nots twist perhaps is the best surface level case of one tribe living on easy mode while the others were barely surviving. In the prior video we discussed the Koror tribe, winning a tribe shelter as a reward which prompted several commenters to bring up the haves tribe, but I decided to keep it in this video for two reasons. Firstly this was an integral theme to the season where the 19 contestants spent the first two days building a shelter outhouse and even a bathroom with the resources already provided by production. Sylvia then divided the tribes into two, where, in a challenge, one tribe won tribal immunity, the entire village, the 19 people had previously constructed, and, oh god, here we go again. Hammocks, silverware, plates, goblets, a bush shower, chests, a couch, pillows, tools and lots of food. Compared to the other tribe who had to go to a new island with only a pot and machete. As noted by one of my commenters, Survivor is literally a show about survival and this twist completely broke the idea of a group of people stranded on an island. In Palau the Karor tribe won the reward for their entire tribe because there wasn't a swap that season. But Fiji did. And why did they keep such a controversial twist in, despite saying it didn't work? Survivor production. That's what. While people can split hairs over if having one challenge to basically get everything is fair, at least there was a somewhat skill based challenge at the start. At the swap the new tribes are determined by rock paper scissors and then, if that wasn't luck based enough for you, Edgardo had to put his hand into a bag, randomly pulling out one of two buffs. Sure, great for Yao Man, Earl and Michelle for going from rags to riches, but from that point on they all make it to the merge thanks to getting the good tribe because they were luckily switched onto easy mode. Nonetheless the halves tribe twist made almost everyone on the green tribe invincible until the merge through a good starting twist where they were further strengthened by the gifts they would obviously win in following reward challenges. And hey, on the topic of gifts, if you like my content, gifting me a subscription would be greatly appreciated. Time to move on to number 2, which is time. Correction, was time. The hourglass twist existed in Survivor 41 and 42 during the merge where the 12 contestants were split into two tribes of five with two sitting out. The tribe that won were given a feast and importantly earned their merge buffs making them immune at the final 12 tribal council. The five then picked one of the two in neither group to join them while the other were sent to a far off island. So while the now six are feasting and getting cocky confessionals, Erica plus Roxroy from 41 and 42 respectively arrived on an island where they had a choice to make. They could either keep an hourglass intact, thus keeping the original timeline where the challenge winners win immunity, or smash it, giving everyone who didn't win the challenge immunity. This is only a twist Australian Survivor could be envious of. Survivor comprises of three elements, strategy, physicality and social, but this twist jeopardizes challenge performance. A tribe that worked extremely hard for immunity several hours later were forced to give it up, allowing their opponents a free ticket to the final 11 because they were losers. The merge is already renowned as a danger spot for individuals who are capable challenge performers and twists like this only make that notion easier to enforce. The winners in this challenge were lied to and much like a game turned into easy mode, the prior losers were given an extra life compared to normal. While one extra life is already worrying, the various forms of redemption islands we've seen over the years takes a number one spot. Previously we discussed how the hourglass twist cuts out physicality, but these redemption island twists flip that dynamic by cancelling a large portion of strategy and social gameplay while cranking the physicality portion up to 11. At the core of Survivor, contestants vote one another out and if you're voted out, you fail. But these redemption islands operate as a safety net, largely excusing per social or strategic gameplay as long as you win the challenges. 
A variety of these islands have existed over survivors' history, like the Battle to Return, Edge of Extinction, Redemption Island, and other small non-elimination twists, typically used in Australian Survivor. All these islands, however, have their own individual traits with their own issues. The most obvious comes from the Redemption Island used in South Pacific, where notorious challenge beast and three-time player Ozzy used the island to skate through particularly the merge section of the game. The previous season Ozzy featured in was Fans vs Favourites, where I brought up past players having innate challenge advantages, which is further showcased in this season, where Ozzy had more challenge experience than his opponents, and even competed in challenges that season that he had previously participated in even some that he previously won. On Redemption Island, he had set up his renowned Pleasure Dome, where he looked after and gave food to those newly voted out before beating them in a challenge, which made the players want to vote for him at the end. Again, Ozzy was the biggest jury threat, despite already losing his flame technically twice, but hit on an island that players, actually in the game, couldn't eliminate him from for good. The eventual Edge of Extinction winner, Chris Underwood, was voted out third in the game, but returned at the final six where he was given an idol, albeit a split one, without needing to spend precious hours scarring the island for it, like other players actually in the game. Australian Celebrity Survivor had the four members of the jury living, sleeping and eating good food on Ponderosa. They competed in a challenge to return, with the two coming back into the game insanely at the final five against three other starving contestants. So all in all, a very deserving number one. If you want me to be number one, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content as I spent a lot of time editing these videos. For those searching for content a little more hardcore, I previously released a video discussing five idol hacks that changed Survivor that I think you should check out. Nonetheless, I hope you all have a great day. Um, peace.